It only took me about a year to figure out how to put together a button roundup video to be entertaining for me to put together and fun for me to present to you guys. Cause I can simply just grab an arcade button, just be like, yeah, a button goes. However, although arcade buttons are boring in the way they work, they definitely finalize the aesthetic when it comes to building your own fight stick. Yes, the button roundup is finally here. You guys can stop fucking memeing my streams with the fucking button roundup video that you keep asking for. We're gonna be taking a look at different brands such as Samwa, Crown, uh, Sumetsu, some American, American buttons, and not Gamer Fingers, because Gamer Fingers, you have to pre-order them. And this video already took long enough for me to put together. You really think I'm going to wait any longer? No. So without further ado... Let's get this video started, shall we? When you're looking at buttons, there are two types. Screw in and snap in. Screw ins have a threaded body and a nut to secure to the case, and a snap in has tabs on the side that will snap in. Long story short... Fuck snap-in buttons, which I'll be sharing cons about that later in the video, but they're about as reliable as America handling a pandemic. I also won't be referencing any 24mm buttons because I spent enough money on 30mm buttons. Go buy them yourself, you broke. Being the scrub lord scientist that I am, I found a way to measure the actuation force required for each button. I grabbed some quarters and kept stacking them until the LED on my Kwamba Dragon turned on, confirming the actuation. Then I would count each quarter to get the total of the grams required for actuation force. With the premise out of the way, we can finally start off with our first batch of buttons, which are going to be Sanwa. The Sanwa OBSFs are pretty much the standard button being a solid common that comes in a large range of colors, even including a metallic series. If you're looking for a translucent button, you have the Sanwa OBSC versions, which internally are the same but have a different sound profile due to the use of a different plastic material in these buttons. Pretty much all of the translucent buttons in the roundup, they all have pretty much a plunger and a top cover that you can put artwork in between so you can show off your artwork from the top of the buttons. Unfortunately, Sanwa did it the shittiest because their two-piece design does rattle, which adds to the terrible sound. Piece of shit. When it comes to slapping an arcade button, plastic to plastic contact can get pretty loud, and Sanwa thankfully found a small solution for this. These pads are some small foam pads that prevent plastic on plastic contact when the plunger meets the bottom of the body. Now although the click and clack of arcade button is now silenced, it unfortunately gave the button a mushy kind of feeling when you would bottom out the button, since you're just jamming the plunger into the silent pad. In response to this, thankfully Sanwa released the OBSF silent buttons which feel the most different as the plunger, aka the face of the button, is designed differently with a flexible mold compared to the stiff plastic. They also removed the plastic tabs from the plunger that usually hit the bottom of the housing, so obviously this makes it quieter as well. And finally, with about six to seven quarters resting on the face of the button, it's gonna require about 35 to 45 grams worth of actuation force. So me personally, I never had any issues with the saw ones during play, but I do have some grabs when it comes to mounting one of them and when it comes to a certain model. The mounting one goes to the Sanwa Silent B2s, mainly because when you have the pins and you're trying to put them on the switch, the whole switch and plunger assembly will pop out of the button, mainly because it doesn't have the tabs of the side anymore to keep them in the housing. This doesn't happen during play, it just happens when you're mounting them, which is annoying. But the one model that I do have a problem with, which sucks because it's probably one of my favorites, is the Metallic series. The fucking tabs on this thing are so easy to break. So if you're using the Metallics, I would highly recommend to use like a snap out tool or something to get them out there safely. But if you're going to be putting them in the fight stick, I would definitely say set and forget. Don't really risk trying to break the tabs and you'll have a useless button down in the future. So from the variety of options that Samwa buttons actually come in, you you can see where they gain their notoriety. You have Samwa OBSF silent buttons that address the sound profiles. You have a wide range of colors such as the metallic series that have some unique colorways that not any buttons here that I'm showing at least today even offer. Now Samwa does have screw in types but they're just really limited. Now due to the actuation force or my measured actuation force it is the softer one within the bunch and I have heard people breathe on them and like swipe them wrong and get a wrong input and just say that the buttons can be too soft in general. But throughout my findings I have found out that no, you're, you're just trash. Recycling on a good day. Sound check.
Next is Scanline City's favorite button, and it's almost direct competitor, Simetsu. The PS14 GNs is the screw-in solid color options, with the PS14 KNs being the translucent option. Unlike the Samos, there is a difference in actuation between the two models, as the solid colors are about 50 to 60 grams, where the KNs take about 10 grams extra due to my absolutely scientific findings. This could be a difference in variance between the models, but at the moment, that's what I got. As you can tell, these Simetsu models are heavier than the sensitive Samos, so if you happen to graze a button, it won't interrupt your combo helping your tournament excuse from and these buttons fucking suck to man I fucking suck. Moving on the snap-in options are the PS14G and the PS15s. If you got big boy hands though these buttons got you covered as it has the largest plunder with a flat face design unlike the typical convex. The tabs are actually much fatter and flexible. Possibly can hold up to the occasional button swap without breaking the tabs. I'm looking at you Sanwa but due to their shape and size may not fit in all fight sticks. Finally the PS15s which are just a cut down version of the PS14s. These are also classified as low profile buttons which means they only fit with fight sticks that have thin panels so if you have an acrylic panel forget about it it doesn't even fit my mac Cats te or my kwama q4 or even my dragon this also goes for the ps14 g's as well even though they're not low profile buttons for those who still want a heavier button simensi has a spring option that you can insert into the button adding actuation force required and a faster button return however i don't see a lot of people using this as it requires 17 cores and the weight of my crippling depression giving it an american-ish feel but we'll get to american buttons a little bit later though the return of the button is nice, the sound of the vibration coming from the spring is not. I also didn't realize until writing this up that Sumetsu doesn't have any solid color snap-ins, only translucent. In other words, the only ones I didn't fucking buy. So with the Sumetsus, I've actually never had any issues with them at all. Moving on. So obviously the Simetsus are the heavier option when it comes to Japanese buttons, and you can go even higher to a American style Asia button with the whole spring option. It also does better with color variety when it comes to screwing buttons, as Samwa's screw-in style buttons are very limited in the color options. However, Simetsu does not have a metallic series like the other two that are in here, the crowns and the Samwas, but I don't mind that as I usually like the Kaiko buttons, which replicate the Astro City or the Candy Cabs, and it gives a unique colorway if that's something that you're looking for. So I definitely say Simetsu is the heavier handed screw-in style buttons if those are you're looking for for unless you're looking for something as strong as an American button. Without further ado, let's get to the sound check. Well, sound what? Sound check. These next two models, I'll be combining them into one category, as they both represent the same thing, an American button, with the Suzo Hap as the concave variant and the convex variant, the Industrious Lorenzo. These are essentially a two-piece button design consisting of the body and the switch, which you'll need to buy individually. The body usually goes by the plunger type being the usual convex normie button or the all-too-well-known concave button of the arcades. The two usual options of switches are the Cherry DX44s, which is a 75 gram heavier switch with a soft click, or the E-Switch, which is a 50 gram switch which has a much more noticeable click. Now you let the quarters rain onto the buttons and they definitely actuated around the same amount of quarters. But in comparison to the other buttons, they're heavy as fuck heavier than all the ones here. However, you will notice that the pins on these switches are quite bigger than the ones you usually see. That's because these are dot .187 pins, so you will need a similar conversion harness like you would need to a JLF to a Korean lever. So fitting in a Japanese style fight stick is going to have some challenges due to its overall length. The body, funny enough, is the thinnest of the bunch while having the smallest plunger in the roundup. So obviously with all these parts, it takes up a lot of space, a lot of real estate inside the case, so you have to make sure it's going to be able to accommodate the American buttons. But who knows, it might be worth it to get that sweet depth defying click that reminds you when you got body in NBC. And lastly, there is a spring inside the button body for a faster button return similar to the Simetsu mod that I mentioned earlier. However, same to the Simetsu, if you slap that button right in the exact right spot, or the wrong spot, I guess in this case, will give you a nice dollar store microphone kind of sound of a bling. I can see how people can complain about your hands hurting, but hey, here's a controller. Sound check. As most of you know, Korean levers are pretty much my bread and butter, but how are their buttons? The Crown 2 ones are the solid color options, which require about 55-ish grams to actuate. Then you have the translucent model, the Crown 201C, that takes about 65 grams. This makes them heavier than their solid color brethren, but slightly heavier than the Simetsu KNs. One thing you'll notice compared to the SOM or the Simetsus is the size of the switch, and that's because it's a multi-piece design, consisting of an enclosure that holds the switch, contacts at the bottom of the enclosure, and then you have the micro switch itself. Now the next ones aren't exactly the first of its kind, but the Crown 
Crown 202 SDBs are the most customizable ones here, period. This is because it uses a Cherry MX speed switch, which are usually found in gaming keyboards, which are the same switches that are found on my keyboard, which you can see in the B-roll right here, which can be swapped into the button. That means no gat arms you have an as big. But be aware of what switch you use, as the travel of the button may push too far into the switch, possibly damaging it. But so far, my novel key sherberts and my trash pandas have been fine. With the stock silver speed switch, it takes about seven cores to actuate, so it brings them really close to the Samwa LBSFs, but they feel more sturdier than the other ones in the round, including the Sumetsus. And of course, just like the other ones, they have a solid color option and the translucent version. With the Crown 201s, I never really had any issues. With the Crown 202s, I did have some issues. I had a set of eight and four of them stopped working out of the blue, but I may have figured out why they stopped working. The pin at the bottom was slightly bent away from the pin of the switch. Imagine this being the contact and this being the pin. The contact was just a little bit away from the pin, not touching it. I did buy a solid color pink set and those have been working ever since then. I've actually had those for just over six months now. This definitely seems like more of a QC thing because I have seen threads of people buying them and then this suddenly not working or some people just never had any issues. So just be aware when you are looking into these. But like I said, my pink 202s have been working flawlessly. So the one thing that's gonna become pretty obvious with the crown buttons is the options of colors because they're not as wide as some say as the Sun with Sumetsu, but is wider than something as the Suzo or Industrial Lorenzo's. But when it comes to the button models themselves, such as the 201s and the 201Cs, feel like a heavier Sumetsu switch that have a little bit more travel. And then you have the endless customizability coming from the 202s, so you have that endless like route you could go down if you don't like any of the options that are listed here today. So, sound check. So as I pertain in the beginning of the video, snapping suck, especially compared to screw-ins because tabs snap all the time, especially when it pertains to the Samwa, especially the clears and the metallics. Those are the ones that break the most often, but all of them are susceptible to breaking. Thankfully, Buttercade actually made a tool to get snappings out without jeopardizing breaking the tabs. Now, this doesn't work on all fight sticks that I've found. It depends on how the snap-in actually mounts in your fight stick, but there is an option there if you want to stick with snap-ins. So let's wrap up these buttons and start off with Samwa. Samwa is definitely for people who are going to be putting their buttons buttons in once and just leave them in there forever. But if you don't mind the whole snap in form factor, you will be getting the biggest option when it comes to colors. You'll be able to have the only button that actually tries to address the sound profile and it's just a lighter switch so it won't be too taxing on your hands. The Sumetsus in general are definitely for players who want a little bit more feedback in comparison to the Sanwas as the Force definitely isn't as taxing as something like the Crown 201s or the American buttons. So yeah, if you're looking for pretty much the Sanwa variant when it comes to options and screw in buttons, Sumetsu is the way to go. For American buttons, I don't, I don't even fucking need a script for this one. Putting in American buttons are an absolute pain in the ass, at least in a Japanese fight stick. However, if you're wanting to replicate that American arcade or that arcade that you ever grew up on from the American buttons that were on said cabinet, this is the only way to go. And the click that comes from the American buttons is absolutely satisfying. One of the few buttons that I could probably just lay around and just click it on in my spare time. However, I can say that they definitely feel the cheapest when it comes to all the other buttons that I have here. They still feel really solid, but if you are gonna put this in a fight stick, I would probably recommend the convex ones because I mean, did you hear the fucking concaves? Jesus, what the? So after some inspection, I actually found out that my concave versions are the long stem version. That's probably why the reverberation makes it through the button a lot more than the convex version, because the industrious are the short ones. However, I do feel the industrious is built better. And finally, here we are with the crown buttons. I'm gonna inject my personal opinion really fast, but when it comes to the crown 201s, they are a step heavier than the Sumetsus, but when it comes to the options, I just rather go with Sumetsu. They're close in range of actuation force, and you got a lot more variety when it comes to colors in general when it comes to Sumetsu. Unless you want bigger plungers, which the crown's plungers are the biggest aside from the Sumitsu PS14Gs. But if you're looking at the 202s, you're gonna have a long list of versatility when it comes to MX style switches that you can find that are compatible for the 202s. And I can definitely say the 202s feel the most solid out of all the buttons here in terms of actually hitting the button and actually handling it. So if you're gonna be swapping the switch out of the 202, I would be a little careful because there are tabs on the side similar to a snap-in that you just wanna creak open a little bit. Don't open them up all the way, but just enough to take the switch out. Also don't lose this really small play that keys in the switch into the button. Probably avoid the 201s. If you really want to like just go into it, I would highly recommend the 202s as long as they're good and they work. So as you can tell, I pretty much kept my personal preference out of this other than until the end, obviously, mainly because I don't really have a favorite button. So if you ask me what button do you like, I am I don't really have one. I like playing on the 202s and the Sumetsus for the most part, but that's mainly because, as I said, I try to stay away from snappings. The metallics are great. I love to look 
duplicate them, but trying to take them out if I decide to mod them in the future is just a pain in the ass. So now that this Google search of arcade buttons has now been compacted into one video, which is now on YouTube because your lazy ass couldn't do it yourself, I hope you enjoyed. I now finally have a Discord. Some people have been asking me about it, so I left it down below. I also left it in the community tab, which nobody checks because I know nobody cares about my videos, but hey, whatever. Peace out, until next time. Woo! Come on, come on!